Okay, so welcome to this first video in the playlist on rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so to introduce the whole subject, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk about the different types of skeletal joints. Okay, so we're going to do this very basically. We're going to look at the two main divisions of skeletal joints and look at their structures. Okay, now rheumatoid arthritis is going to be completely about one of the types of skeletal joints and not really about the other. Okay, so firstly, what is a skeletal joint? Well, quite simply, a skeletal joint is where two or potentially more bones are meeting together and joining, okay? And there's something that has to hold the two of them together. So when you have two separate bones and you want to join them together, how do you do it? Well, you do it with a skeletal joint. So, what are the two main divisions of skeletal joints? Well, the main one is what's known as a synovial joint, okay? And these joints generally have movement within them. So if you've got any sort of joint where you can actually move the joint, i.e. move the two bones relative to one another, it's likely that that's going to be a synovial joint. Now, synovial joints are the main type of joint. And this is the type of joint that's going to be affected by rheumatoid arthritis. The second major division of skeletal joints is what's known as solid joints. Okay, and as you can probably uh, guess from their name, these joints are not movable uh, generally. They're solid, okay, rigid structures. And these are not going to be affected by rheumatoid arthritis. Right, so we'll start off with the synovial joints since they are the stars of this entire playlist. Okay, right, so... Firstly, I'll just start off with the basic structure of a synovial joint, and then we'll talk about a few extra things that you can have within a synovial joint. Okay, so firstly, let's start off by drawing the two bones which are going to meet. So let's say this is a bone. I'm going to draw this very basically. So we'll say that this is the end of one bone, and here is the end of another bone. Okay, and we now want to... Uh, put a synovial joint all around this to connect the two together. So this is a bone, okay, so we'll call this bone 2, and we'll call this bone 1. Okay, right, so firstly, what we should mention is that you don't articulate, which is a fancy word for uh, connect, you don't, uh, or put into contact with, so um, if I put my two hands together, they're articulating together, so I'll put that word down. It's a fancy word for uh, uh, sort of being alongside something. I can't think of a fancier word for what I'm meaning. Okay, so articulate. It means that the two bone surfaces are touching, basically. and you Basically, bone surfaces do not articulate, basically. Instead, what you have over the terminal end of bones is a layer of hyaline cartilage, which generally hyaline cartilage, in nearly all uh, synovial joints it is hyaline cartilage. So over the end of each of the bones, you put this layer of hyaline cartilage. Okay, right, so let me colour in this hyaline cartilage in, in I think I'll colour it in, in turquoise. Okay, so Basically, ooh, whoops, come out of the highlighter. Uh, the um, bone surfaces do not articulate. Instead, the hyaline cartilage that covers the ends of the bones, these are what will articulate with one another. Okay, so here is my hyaline cartilage in turquoise here. Okay, and by the way, this hyaline cartilage is why when you look at synovial joints on a radiograph or on an x-ray scan is the um, probably more, um, less, um, well, the less technical name for a radiograph. So a radiograph is just a fancy uh, word for an x-ray, basically. So when you look at uh, synovial joints on a radiograph, uh, you see great big gaps between the two bones in the synovial joints. And the reason is that the hyaline cartilage on the surf the terminal ends of the bones doesn't really show up that well on the uh, radiograph, okay? So it doesn't absorb x-rays anywhere near as much as bone does. 
so therefore it doesn't really show up on the x-ray, okay? Uh, so when you're looking at synovial joints on a radiograph, uh, then basically it looks as though you've got massive gaps between the two bones, but in actual fact, of course, what you have is the hyaline cartilage, and this is uh, what's filling in the space that you're seeing on the radiograph. Okay, right. Uh, now, what you do is you put an entire uh, capsule around this structure. So let me talk about now the joint capsule. So the joint capsule consists of two layers. Okay, so the first layer I'm going to draw in orange like this. Okay, and it will attach to the margin between the end of the hyaline cartilage and when you go over to just having bone. So they, the joint capsule is going to attach on this margin between hyaline cartilage and bone. Okay, so here's the first layer of the joint capsule, and then you have another layer, an outer layer, which I'm going to show in blue here. Okay, so let me try and get these two nicely uh, together. Okay, and then here is the other uh, joint side of the joint capsule on this side. Okay, right, so this structure that we have got here, this is what's known as the joint capsule. So you have this surrounding the entire joint, basically. Okay, and it makes a, um, a cavity within the joint capsule, basically, and this is what's known as the articular cavity. Okay, and basically it's going to be full of fluid called synovial fluid. Okay, so this is the articular cavity, and it's full of a very sort of viscous fluid known as synovial fluid, which lubricates uh, the joint, basically, synovial Fluid. Because you can imagine that if you actually had uh, these two hyaline cartilage surfaces just rubbing against each other, that would create quite a bit of friction. And when you move your joints, you know, it, you don't feel much friction at all. They move very nicely, okay? And it's because you have this lubricating synovial fluid in the articular ca cavity. Okay, right. So, let's now talk about these two layers of the joint capsule. So, this inner layer here in orange is what's known as the inner synovial membrane, or just as the synovial membrane, okay? So if you want to emphasize this, it's the inner layer of the joint capsule, you can put inner synovial membrane, okay? But most people will just refer to this as the synovial membrane. And the synovial membrane secretes the synovial fluid, so it's the portion uh, that is actually making the synovial fluid that is within the articular cavity, okay? So it has a very important job. Then, uh, the outer layer is what's known as the outer fibrous membrane, okay? So the outer fibrous membrane. And this consists of very dense connective tissue, very, you know, tough connective tissue that is going to hold the entire thing together, okay? So the synovial membrane, you know, is a bit of a pathetic thing. It makes the synovial fluids, it's very important, but it's not a very rigid structure. So it needs to have a protective, uh, dense, uh, outer fibrous membrane to protect it basically and this is what actually protects the joint and holds the whole thing together basically now you can have thickenings in the outer fibrous membrane so the outer fibrous membrane can become so thick basically that it then is actually referred to as a ligament okay so this can become so thick okay so let me show this um, if we thickened up this outer membrane hugely let's say down here then this could now be counted as a ligament, which is just a very uh, thick um, strip of connective tissue that connects uh, the two bones together, okay? So the outer fibrous membrane sometimes can thicken, and then it's considered a ligament. However, not all ligaments are um, thickenings of outer fibrous membranes. So you can have uh, ligaments that have nothing to do with the joint capsule. So, for instance, we could have... Um, and uh, we, you know, we could have another ligament, which I'll try and draw here, that's outside of the joint capsule, and again is a very thick piece of connective tissue that connects the two bones. Okay, so this is a uh, n extra capsular ligament, okay, so one that's outside of the joint capsule, that doesn't involve a thickening of the outer fibrous membrane of the joint capsule. Okay, so let me colour in this, um, this ligament in green. 
So I, the point of this is that uh, not all ligaments are going to be just thickenings of the outer fibrous membrane, although you can have uh, thickenings of the outer fibrous membrane where they become so thick that they are now considered a ligament between the two bones. Okay, so here in green, this is the um, this is the extra capsular ligament, or it's just an example of an extra capsular ligament. Okay, so this now is the structure of a synovial joint. Now, this is the very basic structure of a synovial joint. You can make it more complicated, basically. You can put in things such as articular discs and also fat pads. So let me show you this with another picture of a synovial joint. Okay, so let's say we have bone one here. Okay, so this is bone one. And then we have another bone here. Okay, and then on the terminal ends of the bones, you then have this layer of hyaline cartilage that surrounds the bony surface. Okay, and then uh, you have the synovial membrane and the um, fibrous membrane making up the joint capsule. Okay, so here's the synovial membrane in orange here. Okay. And here is the fibrous membrane in blue here. Okay. And those make up the joint capsule. Right. So, that's our basic structure of a, um, of a um, synovial joint. However, you can stick in structures known as articular discs. So not all synovial joints will have an articular disc, but some synovial joints will have a structure known as an articular disc here. So this is what's known as an articular disc. Okay, and these are made up of fibrocartilage. So they're made of fibrocartilage, which is another type of cartilage. Okay, so it's a different type of cartilage from hyaline cartilage. Now, uh, fibrocartilage is quite compressible, you know, it's quite squashy. So, basically, if the joint becomes compressed, what will happen is the articular disc will absorb that compression. So, if you push these two bones together, what will become compressed is this articular disc. So, it's a compression absorber, basically. It will absorb the compression and protect the two bones from damage. Okay. Right, so that's the purpose of an articular disc. Now, it's going to be slightly difficult for me to show on this picture the other structure I wanted to show you, which is a fat pad, okay, because I've already drawn the joint capsule here. So I think I'll draw another picture. So the another structure you can put in is a fat pad. And the reason I couldn't show it on that picture was because these fat pads are actually uh, between... Uh, the synovial membrane and the fibrous membrane, okay? So I've already drawn the synovial membrane and the f um, fibrous membrane, so I couldn't really then stick in a fat pad because, you know, it will be uh, in between the two. Okay, so here are the hyaline cartilage uh, coverings of the ends of the bones. And then I'll draw the synovial membrane, okay, here, like so, which again is the inner layer of the uh, joint capsule, okay, and then the outer layer of the joint capsule then is uh, this outer fibrous membrane in blue. Now let's say we're going to put a fat pad here, okay, so you'll have a big swelling here, like so, and it will again attach onto the bone, and now in that space between the uh, inner membrane, the inner synovial membrane, and the outer fibrous membrane, what you're going to stick is a large lump of fat, basically. So, let's put this here in yellow. So, in yellow here, this is a fat pad. So, when you have a store of fat in between the synovial membrane and uh, the uh, fibrous membrane of the joint capsule, this is what's known as a fat pad. Okay, uh, so some synovial joints will have articular discs, some uh, synovial joints will have fat pads, some might even have both. Okay, so these are additional structures that you can add in to synovial membranes. However, uh, well, to um, synovial joints, sorry. Okay, however, the 
basic, the core structure is what we've shown here, where you have the hyaline cartilage covering the two uh, ends of the bone, and then you have this joint capsule consisting of this inner synovial membrane, and then this outer fibrous membrane, and then the synovial membrane is secreting this synovial fluid, which is uh, put into the articular cavity and will lubricate the two um, ends of the bone as they uh, move against one another. Right, so that's the structure of a synovial joint, and this is the type of joint that is going to be involved in um, rheumatoid arthritis. This is the type of joint that is going to suffer in rheumatoid arthritis. Now, just for completeness, we'll talk now about solid joints, even though uh, they're not going to be affected in rheumatoid arthritis. So, solid joints can be further divided into two separate types, okay? known as fibrous joints and cartilaginous joints. Okay, right. So, solid joints can be further divided into two types, okay? So, one of these types is what's known as a fibrous joint. Okay, now, in fibrous joints, you do not have an articular cavity full of um, synovial fluid sitting between the two bones. Instead, if we draw the end of one bone here, and the end of the other bone here, what you have between the two bones is lots of very dense connective tissue, basically. So you have a lot of connective tissue. Okay, so this is fibrous connective tissue that connects the two ends of the bones. Okay, so uh, this is why this is called a, a fibrous joint, because you've got fibrous connective tissue between the two ends of the bones. Okay? Then the other type of solid joint is what's known as a cartilaginous joint, okay? And in cartilaginous, whoops, cartilaginous joint, and in cartilaginous joints, uh, between the two ends of the bone, what you have is cartilage connecting the two ends, okay? So if we have the two bones here, then between the two uh, bones, what you'll have is a lump of cartilage connecting them. And the type of cartilage that you have connecting the two ends of the bone is fibrocartilage. So this lump of cartilage that I've now drawn in blue will be fibrocartilage. Okay, right. Uh, so, an example of a cartilaginous joint would be the pubic symphysis, okay? So where the two uh, pelvic bones join together at the pubic uh, region. Okay, so this is fibrocartilage. An example of a fibrous joint would be the sutures that connect the many bones of the skull. Okay, uh, so for instance, the lamboid suture and things like that that are connecting the occipital, parietal, and frontal bones of the skull all together. Okay, so uh, these two forms of joint do not have movement in, clearly, uh, and they're not going to be involved in rheumatoid arthritis, but for completeness, I will put them in this video.